Will you be providing a, a, a room or a home for a Ukrainian Secretary of State? I, I have considered it. I haven't made a decision yet. Obviously, I need to discuss it together with my wife. But I, I think whoever is a host, they, they need to make sure that they can uh, offer the time. I think that it's necessary to, to be a, a, a proper host. And I'm not sure personally whether I can do that myself. Uh, but uh, even if one cannot be a host, I think there are many ways uh, that anyone can help. That One of the simplest ways uh, actually is, and, and obviously I've done this like many millions of British people, is to donate uh, to, to the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal. Noting the nation's human rights record, how comfortable or otherwise are you with the Prime Minister talking to Saudi Arabia about the supply of oil? Well, look, we have been very, very clear with Saudi, our long-standing opposition to the death penalty. We raise this with all countries around the world that still have the uh, death penalty. Um, ultimately, uh, Saudi Arabia is um, an important, influential country in the Middle East and as a, an energy generator. So obviously, it is right that the Prime Minister uh, speaks to them about uh, alternative provision whilst this uh, attack is going on. But ultimately, we have... Uh, in fact, I have had uh, conversations with the Saudis, not just about uh, the death penalty, but also about moving away from uh, oil and gas as a, a source of energy generation. I have no doubt that the Prime Minister will bring these issues up when he, uh, when he speaks to the Saudis on, on his forthcoming trip. It, I can get you any number between six and 20. I refer to the number of miles from the Polish border, the latest bombing from Putin took yeah. place. This obviously, I don't need to remind you, but to remind my listeners, an attack on one member of a NATO is an attack on all members of NATO. Yeah. Secretary of State, how does this escalate the situation in your view? Well, we've been very clear uh, from the start with our NATO allies that if there is any kind of attack on NATO territory, then it will be war with NATO and there will be a, a severe response. Uh, we don't ever set out in advance how exactly we would respond. Uh, of course, we'd work together with our allies. But uh, let's be very clear, Nick, that if there's if a single Russian toe cap steps into NATO territory, there will be war with NATO. Unrelated matter. Um, history shows that sometimes you have to do a deal with the devil. World War Two ended because, of course, the alliance involving Stalin. Boris Johnson, as we speak, is talking. Will be talking to Saudi Arabia about supplying oil. We all know their human rights records. Do you feel a bit uncomfortable about that, Lord Harrington? Well, Nick, you know we've we've got a situation here. Putin, what Putin's done, lead to a significant shortage of energy in the world. The Saudis and others will step up to the plate, and I'm sure the Prime Minister is making the point to them about their human rights record. Every single minister does. And things slowly change. The United Arab Emirates, which he's visiting, um, you know, they are making improvements on this front. Um, they signed the Abraham Accords. They're now a voice for peace in the world. And I hope the Saudis are listening, and I hope they realise that being part of a community, a world community of countries which give human rights is in the interest of them but, and obviously in the interest of the rest of us. But they executed 82 people last weekend, Richard. Yeah, I know, absolutely appalling. Congratulations to you, to your colleague Liz Trust, to all the teams that have worked so hard. Uh, when when uh, Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe and Anoushe Ashura got back to British soil, your heart must have soared, Mr Cleverly. Good morning. Nick, good morning, yeah. Uh, look, you and I have had discussions where we've had really difficult days at work. Yesterday was was a genuinely great day uh, at work. And as you say, it's the culmination of a lot of work from a lot of people over a long time, including, of course, the families of those people who were detained. Um, but, yeah, y yesterday was a good day. Yesterday well done. Day. Some would say, I have to put to you, I don't think you were even born... But had the British government paid its debt in the 70s, this need never have happened. And it's not a very British thing to do to Welch on a debt. How would you respond? Well, look, this, this debt, uh, as you say, you're being slightly generous with regard to my age, but this debt is a debt of around 40 years, four zero years uh, in uh, duration. Um, we agreed uh, a number of years ago that uh, we owed this debt. It's been contested for a long time, but we agreed that we owed this debt. Uh, one of the challenges, of course, is that there are a whole raft of UK and international sanctions against uh, Iran, and we had to make sure that we repaid this debt in a way that did not breach those sanctions, that did not breach money laundering or counter-terrorism financing laws, and was acceptable to the Iranian government. So all those things made it incredibly difficult. We finally 
found a way of doing so. And I'm going to perhaps preempt your next question and frustrate your listeners. But we have agreed confidential, confidential, yeah, confidentiality around that. So I'm not able to go into much more detail than that. But we have finally got it resolved. Before we move on from that, I understand there are a number of other British nationals still in Iran. I know we've talked about this in the past. You're, you're loath, understandably, to give many details. Can you give us an update, though, on however many are left behind? Well, um, uh, Morad Tabaz uh, is is someone that we also negotiated uh, hard for. Um, we have secured his release from prison on furlough. Uh, his, uh, he also has a, he's a tri-national, so he's also got American nationality. That has made it uh, slightly more difficult, but we will continue to work on his behalf and on behalf of other uh, dual nationals in incarceration. And there are people um, uh, from a range of uh, countries around the world and we will continue to work to secure their release as well. On a global perspective, I understand the Prime Minister will be travelling to Saudi Arabia at some point this week to talk about the possible supply of oil. While it is to be welcomed, we don't send money to Putin, of course. Would we want to do deals with the Saudi, noting their human rights record? We've had a long-standing relationship uh, with the, the Saudi uh, government where uh, w there's always a very frank exchange. We don't agree with their approach on human rights. We're, we're always right to, to, to call that out and to talk to them uh, frankly about that. At the same time, it is also possible to have an economic relationship, you know, whether people like it or not, China, uh, this, uh, Saudi Arabia is is the world's largest producer of crude oil. And it's important, especially at the time of a major global energy crisis, that we have these talks with them. What has your boss, Defence Secretary Ben Wallace, told you about this fake call, this uh, video call with an imposter proposing as a Ukrainian um, MP? Yeah, he was pretty cross. Um, he, uh, I think, was embarrassed that it had happened but and he's asked some pretty tough questions of the department about how it happened but nick i know you know ben well um ben well, when you said he was pretty cross i'm glad i wasn't on the receiving end of a pretty cross ben wallace minister yeah yeah uh, you and me that both. would be incoming uh, i think you would call that incoming he, fire he 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 can uh, he can dish out a good bollocking when he needs to uh, good on him 